Question 1 from Paper 1 of the 2022 Higher Physics Examination from the SQA. A ball is thrown vertically upwards and falls back to its starting position. The acceleration time graph represents the motion of the ball. And we can see the acceleration time graph there. Which of the following velocity time graphs represents the motion? And we're given uh, five graphs on the right there. Well, the first thing we have to notice from the acceleration time graph is that the acceleration over the journey is constant. That's represented by that straight line here. It means there's a constant, unchanging acceleration. And, what's more, it's a negative acceleration. And that ties in with the fact that if you throw a ball into the air, from the moment it leaves your hand, there's only one acceleration acting on it, and that's acceleration due to gravity. And in our rules of motion, anything that's down the way is negative. So what we're looking at there is the negative acceleration due to the force of gravity. So that's our first major statement. A ball thrown into the air has only one acceleration acting on it due to the force of gravity acting downwards on it. Now, the other thing we have to uh, remember is that the gradient of any velocity time graph, the gradient of a velocity time graph at certain points, represents the acceleration. So if you know the, the, the gradient at a particular point on a velocity time graph, you can work out this acceleration. So we put those two clues together. What we're looking for is a graph, a velocity time graph, which has a straight line which is sloping downwards to represent the negative gradient. And it's a constant line. There's no, there's only one line representing the motion. There's no two gradients there. Now, if we look at the first graph, we can see that seems to be the top contender because the velocity of the ball when it leaves the hand will be high and as it progresses through the air upwards, its velocity is going to be reduced to zero and then its velocity is going to increase in the negative direction. But remember, there's one acceleration taking place, so there should only be one gradient. And we have got just the one gradient there. And the graph of velocity against time in graph A does tell the story of a ball being thrown into the air. So our answer for the first one is 1A. Now we can dismiss the other ones by saying, looking at graph B, you can see we have got, well you could argue that we have got two uh, equal gradients here, there's the gradient there and there's the gradient there. But what rules this one out is the fact that when you throw the ball into the air, it's vertical velocity upwards can be positive, is going to be gradually reduced under the acceleration of gravity, which is, of course, acting downwards, negative. In this case, graph B, the graph, shows that the velocity of the ball is increasing positively, so we can rule that one out. Graph C, we can rule that one out because it's got two gradients. It's telling us there's two accelerations taking place here, which really is not the case. There's only one acceleration taking place, and that's the acceleration due to gravity. So we can rule out graph C, and likewise we can rule out graph E, because that's showing two different gradients, which is showing you two different accelerations. Graph D could have been a contender, but the big giveaway for graph D is that its gradient is a positive gradient, and that's not what we get from the acceleration time graph, which we're asked to represent. The acceleration time graph is showing a negative acceleration, which means that this graph here, D, has got a positive acceleration, positive gradient, and we can rule that one out. Though the answer to this question is graph A. It's the famous throw the ball into the air graph and as you can see running on the background there is a simulation of a ball being thrown into the air and as you can see the ball thrown into the air produces a velocity time graph exactly equal to graph A. So for question one the answer is graph A. Question 2 from paper 1 of the 2022 Higher Physics Examination from the SQA. A student uses the apparatus shown to determine the acceleration of a trolley as it moves down a ramp. The trolley is released from rest at point P and moves down the ramp. A card attached to the trolley passes through a light gate at point Q and the time for the car to pass through the light gate is displayed on an electronic timer. The vehicle's acceleration A is determined by the relationship V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. And we do know we can easily change that to find acceleration because acceleration would be equal to V squared minus U squared. And you'd have to divide by 2 times the total distance travelled during that particular motion.
But let's look and see what the student has got to say about it. The student makes the following statements about the terms U, S and V, which are essential to finding out the acceleration. He says, first of all, that U equals 0 metres per second. Well, he is correct in that case because the trolley is starting off from rest. So we can say that the student's first statement is correct. The trolley is moving off from rest. And that means the initial velocity U is going to be 0 metres per second. His second statement, or her second statement, is that S is the length of the card. No, that's wrong. S, in fact, is the distance which the trolley moves from point P to point Q. So that is the distance S in there. And that's the S in the equation, the distance over which the change in velocity happened. So the second statement is not correct. The third statement the student makes is that V is equal to the distance between P and Q and the time displayed on the timer. Well, to find that the speeds or the velocity at position Q, you have to rely on the length of the card, which is that distance there, length of the card. And as it passes through the electronic timer T, you can work out what the velocity is at that particular point by just doing the equation velocity equals the length of the card divided by t, the time on the electronic timer. Now the student has got for a statement in part 3 that v is the distance between p and q divided by the time displayed in the timer. Now that's wrong. To get the speed, or near enough the instantaneous speed at position q, you have to measure the length of the card and divide it by the time it blanks out the electronic timer to give you t. So statement 3 is not going to be true, it's going to be false. So that just leaves us with one statement, and that's u equal to zero, and that's going to be answer one. So for question two, the answer is letter A.